In the headlines, an international labor organization forum turns the spotlight on enhancing productivity locally. Tuesday's political public gathering on Kennedy Avenue receives the police chief's permission. And Campbell and Biosh promised $500,000 for small business development. I am Andrea Lee with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. Thank you for staying with us. First up, an official of the International Labour Organization, ILO, is calling on employers around the region to generate scientific data on productivity. Employers Activities Specialist at the International Labour Organization Caribbean Office, Vanessa Fowler, was speaking during a workshop on Monday aimed at developing a regional policy on productivity in the workplace. The workshop also looked at understanding and improving productivity for small and micro enterprises as well as using ILO tools to boost productivity. I think the biggest challenge is around availability of data. Remember without any data you are not able to, to measure, you are not able to improve, you are not able to monitor how you are doing. So that the biggest challenge so far that we have observed is around availability of data and it, it is therefore imperative on firms, on enterprises to collect such data so that the data can then be analysed to give a country picture and also you know, to at an aggregate level give a regional overview view of how productivity issues are, are faring. She says that productivity is very important for regional integration. It's very important because what we've also doing as part of regional capacity building and, and cooperation within the countries of the region is to make sure that where you have countries that has dedicated productivity structures in the form of councils or centers, we are able to work with them and, and also provide their lessons learned and, and see how those lessons can be replicated in, in other countries where they're still trying to put in place some measures to deal with productivity. So that is on the aspect of, of, of capacity level but also at the regional level the purpose of those workshops is to at the end of the 15 workshops to agree at the confederation of employers uh, uh, in the in the Caribbean region to say what is the policy policy position as employers in the region what is our position as far as productivity and competitiveness is concerned and once we are able to articulate and agree on that position then we can lobby our governments at, at, at the regional level to put some measures in place so that as a region collectively we are able to improve our productivity the workshop is being funded by the European Union as part of bringing the Caribbean closer together and similar workshops are expected to take place in 15 Caribbean countries by March 2017. Locally, it was hosted by the Dominica Employers Federation in collaboration with the Caribbean Employers Federation and the ILO Caribbean Office. In Carnival News Now, Chairperson of the Road Parade Committee, Stevenson Hyacinth, is giving Saturday's opening parade a thumbs up, although he has recognized areas that need to be addressed for future parades. Speaking to Channel 5 News on Monday, Stevenson Hyacinth says Saturday's parade was longer than expected and this was due to the increased number of vehicles on the route. One of the feedbacks that we have received, and I, I, I kind of uh, agree with it, the period is a bit too long mm -hmm. and obviously I already identified an area where we can in fact do something better. The area in terms of the, the number of pageants that we have now. We have the, the teenage pageant, we have the princess show, we have Miss Jamboree, we have the mother's queen and we have a national queen show mm -hmm. um, contestants. I, I feel we don't need each of the princesses on a veto. We do not need each of the teenage pageant um, contestants on a veto. We do not need the Miss Jamboree contestants on, the, on all, each one on a veto. I think basically that should be preserved for the, the Miss Dominica um, um, contestants. If we go back to what used to be, where we have each of these set, um, groups on a flat-based truck, we, the period will be much smaller 
but tighter, sweeter and better. Hyacinth pointed out that this increase in the number of vehicles leads to lulls in the music as the hi-fi tracks have to be interspersed properly among the floats. On the issue of gaps in the parade, Hyacinth says that gaps will always exist, but the committee is working on ways to reduce them. And if you look at the order of the parade, that's what we have taken into consideration also, because the traditional groups, they, they have their own drums, so we do not want their drum or the, 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 the hi-fi to interfere with the music. So we normally send them off. So that's the first stage of the, of, of the period. Secondly, we go for the, the queens and, and, and teenage pageant contestants, and that is where the law is. There will be gaps because you do not want every group directly behind each other because of the interference of the music and so. But as I say, we are thinking still of how we can create that buffer between one group and the other so that if you don't want to see any gap, then we could have some dancers or some people doing some images and so forth. But we'll think about that. This year's opening parade saw 110 road marshals and volunteers on the route coordinating the flow of the parade. As regards concerns of road marshals and volunteers doing their required duties, Hyacinth says that such a large group of people is generally difficult to manage. That's a trouble group for us. We really are working to ensure that they, when we ask persons, or persons offer themselves to volunteer and to come along with us, that they understand clearly. We have been doing those training sessions. Some get it, some don't get it. So some do a fantastic job, very good job, but the others are some slackers. And obviously the slackers will drop them off. But basically, I, I think it was an excellent parade, and I think Monday and Tuesday also is going to be great. Carnival Monday and Tuesday street parades are carded for 27th and 28th February. Moving to the outer districts, half a million dollars of government funds have been promised for the small business sector in Campbell and Biosh. Prime Minister Skerritt announced the news to residents of those communities when he visited them on the weekend. He pledged $250,000 to both Campbell and Biosh for small business development. I would like to commit to Biosh $250,000 for small business development. You come to Biosh and the people sewing, the people making fish pots, the, the people making cakes to sell, the people with little shops, you know, you're, you're enterprising people, and you don't sit there and complain. You, you, you try to do something as small as it is to survive. And that's what I like about Biosh and so on. Biosh could have many reasons to complain, but they don't. So I'm hoping that we can get the application forms immediately and um, start the process. So the money's available, we can start immediately once the forms, you fill out the forms. Everybody would have to, those who are interested would have to fill a form because we have to account for the taxpayers' money. During his visit to Biosh on Sunday, he also committed $30,000 plus a stipend to the Biosh Enhancement Committee for the development of the fishing trade. They have built their facilities, they have stocked their facility, they have bought a freezer and a, and a cooler, a chiller, they have bought supplies, and the whole intention is to be able to buy the fish from the fishermen and they would market it on behalf of the fishermen. So they buy it from you, and then they would go out and fetch the markets uh, for you. And I think this is commendable. So we committed to paying the salaries of the young people who are employed by that group for one year. And then they have a plan to, to implement some programs, and we committed $30,000 to that young group. So they will get that money before the end of February 2017 to be able to implement some of the programs. Skerritt said monies would also be allocated for construction of a retaining wall, communal sewerage system and washrooms for Biosh residents. The Prime Minister has a plan to visit Dublin next month where he said he will make financial commitment to the residents there. In other top stories, the police chief has given the green light for a peaceful public political meeting on Tuesday organized by the opposition parties. Police Chief Daniel Carbon called a news conference on Monday to address the matter. He said permission has been granted for the activity following a meeting with executive members of both the United Workers Party and the Dominica Freedom Party on Monday. In the interest of national security, permission 
is granted to the United Workers Party to hold a public meeting on the upper section of Canada Avenue on Tuesday, February 7, 2017 from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The organizers assured me that the meeting would be peaceful and that they will take all necessary steps to ensure that the people attending the meeting conduct themselves in accordance with the rule of law and order. Carbon has warned that the police force will employ traffic management, crowd control and security duties to ensure a peaceful meeting. The organizers will advise, one, to ensure that speakers at that meeting refrain from making inflammatory statements to incite violence. Two, to ensure, to ensure that the meeting is peaceful and that they adhere to the rule of law and order. The police force will take all necessary lawful actions to prevent lawlessness and to pre protect life and property and to ensure that members of the public go about the lawful business unimpeded. The police force will deal with anyone who incites or perpetrates acts of violence and lawlessness. Additionally, the police force has a mandate to protect the state and institutions of the state. Members of the public who plan to attend the meeting must conduct themselves lawfully. In other news, medical doctor Sam Christian will return to court on the 9th of June for the preliminary inquiry into a recent incitement charge. Christian was released on bail last Thursday after being charged with incitement to violence that same day. Businesswoman Annette saint stood shorty for him in the sum of $20,000. The complaint by Superintendent Matthew Cuffey is that Christian did unlawfully incite to burn down the Parliament of Dominica by uttering certain remarks in November 2015 at Peebles Park where he encouraged a crowd of UWP supporters to stand against the Speaker of the House, stating that, open quote, we know that this Parliament was burnt down before, and if the Parliament continues to operate this way, ladies and gentlemen, it will be burnt down again by the people of Dominica, close quote. Attorney Joshua Francis is representing Dr. Christian in the matter. You are watching the Channel 5 News. More when we return. Welcome back. Living conditions of 42 Kingsville families will be enhanced come year end through a $462,000 housing revolution sanitation project. The project, which will see the construction of new washrooms for Kingsville residents, is also part of government's program to eradicate pit latrines. A signing ceremony took place on Monday at Kingsville, where contractors were awarded contracts to start the project. Housing manager Hillary and Jules told the ceremony that some of the households to benefit actually do not have any washrooms. There are some people who built their modest houses only with the sleeping and living quarters. Very often we have the kitchen on the outside and no washroom. And sometimes we use the public conveniences. And so when we look at the number 42, I don't want us to be alarmed to say that King's Hill has 42 pit latrines. No, there are some pit latrines, but it is a number of other households who had no sanitary facilities within their houses. The typical washroom facility designed by the housing division of the Ministry of Lands, Housing Lands and Water Resource Management measures some six feet by seven feet and is fitted with a toilet, face basin, and a shower. The project is being funded by the Citizenship by Investment Program. Government Senator Jaisaya Benoit, who's also a Kings Hill resident, says the war on pit latrines is a significant undertaking. Think of the absence of security for a senior citizen having to go to a pit latrine in the dark of night. Think of the risk in terms of injury 
when they walk their way from their household to that pit latrine. Think of the exposure they will face to the elements, heavy rains, winds that can affect their, their respiratory uh, symptoms such as asthma and other respiratory diseases. Also, think of the inconvenience to the neighbors that they have suffered over the years. Mr. Jules hit the nail on the head. There may not be 42 latrines in Kings Hill, but we know that the drain, the valley between Center Street and Back Street is a major problem for us. And that's what is in effect the washroom or the latrine for many families. That's unacceptable. Two major changes are on the cards for Mass Dominic 2017. Minister for Tourism Robert Tong made the announcement when addressing the opening ceremony for this year's carnival celebrations. One of these changes is the route of the parade which has been extended westward and will also lead to a change in venue of the judging of carnival bands. This year we will see two major changes to the carnival parade and the routes. On Monday and Tuesday we will use the Bayfront as the most westerly route to the parade. Many of you will know that the Hanover route is very narrow and I've had many incidents in that area. So the Bayfront will be the route that will be used for judging and also to ensure that Carnival looks even better. The other change, as alluded to at the media launching in January, is the greater inclusion of Carnival bands from the outer districts. This year, the DFC has officially partnered with groups from Grand Bay, St. Joseph, Maho, the Caranago Territory, and Portsmouth to participate in the national parade on Monday so that we can see more activity happen in Roseau. Additionally, we encourage all to participate because there will be a significant prize to be awarded for the largest troop which comes to Roseau on Monday. This year, government is contributing over $700,000 to Mass Dominique 2017. Last year, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt said that government's subvention to the World Creole Music Festival and the Carnival celebrations would be significantly increased. As you will recall, the Honourable Prime Minister gave his commitment to increasing support to tourism marketing to improve increased financial contribution to Carnival and the World Creole Music Festival. The government has therefore made good on its promise of an increase in the subvention to Mass Dominic 2017 from $360,000 to $720,000. Ladies and gentlemen, this represents a 100% increase of the subvention for Carnival. The significant, significant increase is made possible from the proceeds of the Citizen by Investment Program. Contrary to what others may want you to believe, our program is one of the best run in the Caribbean. We are the only country in the Caribbean that has published detailed numbers in Parliament on the media in terms of sales and how the funds are being spent and what remains in the bank. Some would like you to believe that money that, that money that is deposited in a government account has been returned to a sender. That is totally unfair and untrue. Only funds that have only funds that are on hold can be returned to the sender. In more carnival-related matters, Mayor of Roseau, Her Worship Irene John, has called on Dominicans to look for opportunities to contribute to the carnival product for this year's carnival celebrations. John says it takes an all-hands-on-deck approach in order to have a successful Mass Dominic 2017. The potential which it provides can be an economic transformational tool. Over the past few years, there have been many benefits for persons participating in carnival activities. I am sure that there are opportunities for every one of us. You have to look for which, for which opportunity that suits your needs. Search for the skill and talent within you. Showcase that talent. Our carnival calls for all hands on deck. Participate meaningfully and make Dominica's carnival experience a memorable one for us and also our visitors. The mayor also officially handed over the keys of the city to chairman of the Dominica Festivals Committee, Gerald Kuzlatig. Tourism director Colin Piper says the carnival celebrations is one of the centerpieces of Dominica's three major festival events and the country must continue working together to develop the carnival product. Carnival is more than a cultural celebration. It has emerged as a global industry. 
creating numerous opportunities for the creators and major players. It creates important linkages with tourism and other key sectors and it helps to build national pride and social and cultural consciousness. But to find greater benefits, we need to continuously work on stimulating new ideas, help in shaping sector-wide approaches that will ensure that we find success and bring greater benefits to all the key stakeholders. Carnival celebrations this year are being held under the theme Dominic Kidu. And government has put out to tender a $4 million Charles Avenue Road project. Public Works Minister Senator Miriam Blanchard said last week that the project would have gone out to tender this Monday. As announced by the Honorable Prime Minister during his press conference in January, estimates and designs for the rehabilitation of the much-traversed Charles Avenue had been completed. Following a further review of same, this project will go out to tender on Monday. We all recall that this project will be funded through funds or revenue collected from the road maintenance levy. We expect work on Charles Avenue to commence by the start of the second quarter of the year. That's news. Kenny Williams comes up next with your sports highlights. First up in sports, Leeward Islands Hurricanes beat the West Indies under-19s by eight wickets in the Nagico Super 50 on Monday. Hurricanes won the toss and elected to field. First up at the crease, the under-19s had wickets falling at regular intervals, struggling to hold their own against a superior Hurricanes opposition and finally being bowled out for 78 runs. K. Kalicharan had the highest figures for the under-19s in that match with 33. Set 79 to win, Hurricanes resisted with 82 for 2 in 16.5 overs. J. Hamilton added 42 while M. Hodge supported with 31. Meantime in weekend games, Jamaica bested combined campuses and colleges by 44 runs. We had half centuries from Andrew McCarthy and a German Blackwood for the Jamaican team. Scores Jamaica 204 all out in 45.2 overs, CCC 160 all out in 41.3 overs. Home conditions favored Barbados when they won their match against Guyana by two wickets. Final scores, Guyana 186 all out batting first, Barbados 188 for 8 in 49.3 overs. The Leewards beat Kent by 105 runs, Kieran Powell contributed 106 for the winning team. Final scores from that match, Leewards 275 for 9, Kent 170 all out in 39.3 overs. And Windward Islands Volcanoes added another win to their tally when they defeated the West Indies under-19s by 5 wickets with 58 balls remaining. Final scores on the 19s, 207 for 9, Volcanoes 210 for 5 in 40.2 overs. Moving on to football, we can tell you that Caribbean Cool Harlem United hammered Petro Caribe Point Michel 7-0 in the Dominica Football Association's Flow Premier Division on the weekend. And Bath Estate Football Club was a no-show in the match against the Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers, giving easy points to the Bombers team. Meantime, in the first division, East Central defeated Exodus Football Club 2-0. Finally, in an altercation between a Bath Estate player and the match referee in the Malzakar Bath Estate vs. MV Max on the Bombers game, led to no points being awarded in that match. The incident took place after the referee issued a red card to the player for his conduct during the match. Meanwhile, President of the Referees Association here supports the idea of implementing more serious disciplinary measures to players with such behavior during games. We also want to condemn what transpired in, in, in the match and condemn all, all acts of violence in, in football, particularly against match officials. This should not go, go, go easy. At, at no point should this go easy. We have, we have seen this in the past and I think now is the time when we should stamp out all violence in, in football, whether it be against a fan, a fellow player, or an opponent, or, or a match official. 
He says the case will be brought before the DFA and await further processing. He also said with the launching of the DFA's under-15 league, this is not a good example for the younger ones looking for a role model. It would be based on the reference report. It would be submitted to the FA and then based on, on um, their own laws or the, the bylaws, they would decide what punishment would go towards that player. But it's a matter that I too want to, to, to support the referee and to encourage the referee to take the matter to the court. Whatever happens to the guy in, in football, in terms of the DFA, I don't think it's going to be enough to, to, to stamp out that, that violence against referees. You, the guy might get a few match bans and he might do it again. Another player might do it again, but I think it's a matter that we need to take further and ensure that an example is made of one player so that the others will, will, will stop it. Yeah, that, that is very discouraging. We're trying to build players from young. And then this is not this is really not the best thing for, for our young players to be seen. The, the, the players involved might be players that our youth players are looking up to. And when you have that kind of behavior in game, it's not encouraging. Next up, it was a nail-biting final in the Confidence Yourself White City Football League where Vipers Football Club stole the game from Baltrix United on penalty kicks. The game was one all at full and extra time, then went into penalty kicks followed by sudden death where Vipers were crowned champions. Randolph Peltier is captain of the winning team, best striker and leading goal scorer in the league. It was a tense game and they, they scored first and slightly pressure on us but um, I told my team we don't, we don't, we don't want to give up in that game because it's just in, in the first half they scored. Anyway, I leveled the score at the half so at half time we went 1-1 um, so that gave us a chance to recover ourselves and we came in the second half and they ended up getting a red card and um, changed the game completely but they still had most of the position. So, we are going for the draw and then we made it in the penalty. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Your weather forecast is next. Hello, welcome to your weather. I'll be your presenter, Farah Rock Career. Today, weak and stable conditions was the dominant feature across the Lesser Antilles, and it resulted in generally cloudy skies across Dominica and resulted in a few brief showers. Now, earlier radar imagery indicated some scattered showers dispersed across the Lesser Antilles. The weather tonight is expected to be partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy and breezy with some scattered showers. And and tomorrow we can expect mostly cloudy skies, breezy conditions with some scattered showers. The marine conditions, well, sea conditions will be moderate. Waves are expected to pick up to 2.5 meters, that is 8 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers, particularly on the east coast, you're advised to exercise caution. Let's look ahead now into the next three days of tomorrow, Tuesday. Mostly cloudy and breezy with some scattered showers. Similar conditions are expected for a Wednesday. However, a relative improvement is expected on Thursday. The day will start off as partly cloudy with some scattered showers and it will become fair to partly cloudy with a few brief showers. The rest of the Caribbean tomorrow can expect occasional cloudy skies with some scattered showers, of course, some breezy conditions as well, while the southern portion of the Lesser Andalus can anticipate fair to partly cloudy skies. Let's move on now to the international city forecast. Both New York and London can expect some cloudy skies with some showers, some thunderstorm activities expected for the city of Miami and Caracas and Beijing can expect some partly cloudy skies. The sunrise tomorrow at 6.33 a.m. and will set at 6.06 .06 p.m. For more information, you could always visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for your next weather broadcast. Thank you. To end the news, the headlines again. An international labor organization forum turns the spotlight on enhancing productivity locally. 
Tuesday's political public gathering on Kennedy Avenue receives the police chief's permission. And Campbell and Biosh promised $500,000 for small business development. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.